The lock-in effect. It's a phenomenon that occurs within the housing market where homeowners choose not to sell due to high interest rates because they have low interest rates and if they were to sell their house, they would end up in new high interest rate mortgage. Now, this is merely a summary of our new Substack newsletter installment. If you'd like to read the whole thing, it's available for free in our Substack newsletter. We'll provide you a link within the comments. But to summarize, what we're looking at is a situation where we have very high interest rates that decline and eventually loosen up this inventory. We took a look at two periods of time, 1990 and the year 2000, and, and considered what happened in the past. Now we can see in 1990, interest rates fell from 8.25 down to 6.75%. Uh, now, the histogram bars we see here represent the new one-family home sold. These bars show the velocity, the speed at which the homes are being sold. So we can see that it was declining precipitously until interest rates came down to the 6.75 level. That wasn't the low, certainly, but it was only at this level that when home prices and the velocity, I should say, the home price uh, sales started to increase. We take a look at also the unemployment rates. Now, the unemployment rate started to tick higher. We moved from 5.2 to 6.4%. At 6.4% unemployment, that's when the new family homes, uh, the velocity of those sales began to pick up. There was more sellers and buyers. It was that unemployment rate rising that scared a lot of people back into the market to sell their house. We also consider consumer price index back in 1990. Uh, on a year-over-year -year basis, we can see we fell from 6.4 down to 5.6%. At that point, the economy was slowing enough where homeowners said, okay, I want to get out of my mortgage. I want to get out of my house. We can also consider the period of time in the year 2000-2001. Here's the Fed funds rate that dropped from 6.5 down to 3.5% a full 300 basis points. But it was only at 3.5% that the housing market really woke up and sellers came back to town. We also take a look at the unemployment rate, which rose from 3.9 to 5%. At the 5% level, sellers came back to the markets. Now we also have the consumer price index in 2001. We see we dropped from 3.7 down to 2.6%. And again, a declining market scared the sellers back into the marketplace. Now, present day, we have Federal Reserve interest rates unchanged for quite a while now at 5.5% after a tremendous move to the upside. And so far, we can see a declining velocity, a declining rate of new home sales. We see the unemployment rate that currently stands at 3.7% after hitting lows of 3.4%. So we're not really that far off the lows. The unemployment rate still uh, remains quite low, relatively speaking. And we also take a look at our consumer price index. That is certainly the headline number over the past year or so. We dropped from levels on a year-over-year -year basis from 9% down to the current 3.3%. If you take all this data and put it together, well, first of all, take a look at the 1990-91 era. We had the Federal Reserve interest rates that dropped from 825 to 675. That represents a 1.5% decline in federal funds rate. And that is really the key. The lock-in effect, the lock -in effect ends when interest rates come down. That is a mechanism. When interest rates come down enough, would-be home sellers say, okay, the economy doesn't look good. I want to get out of my house. Low interest rates, they're low enough. But it's also the unemployment rates that rises. When interest rates coming down, it usually means the economy is softening. Otherwise, the Federal Reserve wouldn't cut rates. Well, the unemployment rate from 90 to 91 went from 5.2 to 6.4, went up 1.2%. And that helped motivate potential would-be home sellers back into the market. And the consumer price index from 6.4 to 5.6 represents almost a 1% reduction in, in uh, the inflation rate. And again, that shows us the economy is softening and it's pushing sellers back into the markets. 
Well, the same pattern took place in 2000, 2001. Interest rates fell from 6.5 to 6.5 to 3.5 percent. Unemployment rate rose from 3.9 to 5.0, and the consumer price index fell from 3.7 to 2.6. You see, the the people that want to sell their homes, they have two motivations to do so. First of all, interest rates are coming down, so they said, okay. You know, now I'm not worried about selling my house because if I buy something else, the interest rates aren't as high. But number two, there's signs here that the economy is slowing. Unemployment rates going up, consumer price index is going down. So there's two, it's a push and a pull, so to speak. Now, currently 5.5% interest rates. So far, the Fed has not cut rates. Number one, so far, would be home sellers don't have that pull. They're not being pulled into the market. They don't want to sell their 1% mortgage right now and roll themselves into a 5.5% mortgage. Well, it's actually more than that, 5.5% federal funds rate. The unemployment rates uh, from the lows of 3.4, now 3.7, it's still relatively low. It's not it has not gone up enough where uh, it's pushing people you know, or you know, really motivating people to sell their home. They're, so far, the economy looks strong. Stock markets at all-time highs, and the consumer price index, yeah, it fell from nine point zero to three point three percent. No, first of all, we're not back at the two percent federal funds rate yet. So the Federal Reserve still has more way to go. But so far, we can say we've dropped five point seven percent in terms of the inflation, not as a result of a slowing economy but as a result of high interest rates. But so far, at least according to these numbers, the high interest rates have not had a detrimental impact on the economy. And that's why we have a lock-in effect. We still have the high interest rates, and we still don't see evidence of a slowdown. Now, one very easy and objective way to quantify this lock in effect and when it's done is by looking at the monthly supply of new houses. Now, these numbers very simply represent how many months at the current sales pace, how many months of inventory do we have? So we see uh, going up to 1991, we had as much as 9.4 from 7.0 to 9.4 months of inventory. In January of 91, we had seven months of inventory, seven months to clear all the homes uh, that are for sale. Now, in January of 91, now it takes 9.4 months. And that's a sign the lock in effect is ending as more inventory comes to the markets. Same pattern from December 2001 through December 2002. We saw 3.8 go up to a high of 4.3 and settle out for the year at 4.0. Not as dramatic of a rise, but certainly the inventory did increase. Now, currently, we see the monthly supply of new homes has gone in the opposite direction. July of 22, we had 10.1 months of inventory. If you recall also, this was following the COVID lockdowns. So we had a lot of pent up inventory and that led to that very high number. Maybe some would say artificially high. Nevertheless, 10 months of inventory has dropped down to a current 8.2. And that's after hitting lows of 7.1 earlier. So certainly, and this is, I know, relatively higher than the examples we saw in the past, but no two economies are you know, equally right and equally the same, I should say. And the fact of the matter is the lock-in effect is there. Why? We know because there are very high interest rates. And so far, there's really little signs that the Federal Reserve is going to cut rates, at least you know, certainly in the March meeting, they're not expected to. So that lock-in effect is here, at least for the time being. Now, like we said, this is merely a summary. If you're interested in this topic, we encourage you to go to substack.com. It's absolutely free to join. And you can see this and all of our other publications right here at Just the Data. We hope this has been helpful. We look forward to seeing you back soon.